All right, this was going to be another exercise uh, for you today. Um, we're going to start looking at coordinate systems. Uh, so I've created a file just called CS1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a four inch cube. So uh, with the origin dead center in the cube and the X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to go two inches in each direction like that. Uh, just for clarity's sake, I will make a clearance plane uh, suitable for that. And I'm going to tell it that this is a five axis mill. Um, now, I'm not really that concerned about the tool path or the setup on the machine or anything like that. Uh, my main concern is just that the software understand that it can get to actually all six sides of this. Uh, would be a pretty special five axis mill and fixture setup, but uh, but we're going to create some geometry and then tool path on each of the six sides of this. All right, so I'm going to turn on my coordinate system grid or my coordinate system plane um, just to give us a visual reference of where the coordinate system's at. Now, if I were actually doing this, my origin would probably be on the top surface up here, but for the sake of the exercise, I'm making the world origin just dead center in the block. So uh, what I want to do is create six coordinate systems, one for the top, then the front, then the right side, the back side, and the left side. Now we're back around to the front again, and we'll do also one on the bottom. All right, so I'm going to quit rotating that thing around because it's getting confusing. Okay, now Gibbs, when you go to an isometric view, which the shortcut for that is Control-I, uh, it's a 45-degree elevation, 45-degree rotation, which with a cube like this and the origin in the center of the cube, the near corner, the far corner, and the origin are all in a line, which makes perspective awkward. Uh, so I typically, in a situation like that, would kick the part around just a little yeah. bit. But... Uh, Another thing that I'm going to do is I typically don't rotate the part around to face the different sides as I'm going. It's very easy to get lost as far as which side you're looking at. If you know that you're in an isometric view, you know that this is the top up here and this is the front here, and then you can you can make sure that all these coordinate systems are going where they need to go. Uh, so top, front, the right side, the back side, the left side, and then the bottom or is the order that I'm going to do it in. So I'm going to open my coordinate system list. Um, I'm not going to change the XY plane. I'm going to create one, two, three, four, five, six new coordinate systems. And I like to name my coordinate system, so I'll go ahead and call that one top, front, right, oops, right, and by the way, to rename these, you have to select the coordinate system first, and then usually another click to, to type in over it. So, uh, so we did right, this is going to be back. This will be left. And this will be bottom. All right, so I've named these, but I haven't done anything with them. They are all still exact duplicates of the XY plane. Anytime you click the button to create a new CS, the new CS is always going to be an exact duplicate of whatever coordinate system was active when you click that button. So now I need to manipulate these coordinate systems to put them where I want them to be. And that's done with the coordinate system palette, or the CS palette, which looks like this. Now, the CS palette is specifically for manipulating user coordinate systems. If I go to the XY plane to the world coordinate system, uh, coordinate system number one, all these tools gray out. You can't, you can't use these to manipulate coordinate system one. But uh, user coordinate systems can be manipulated here. All right, so my strategy here is I want each coordinate system where it is on the face that it applies to. And when you're looking at that face from a normal direction, the left, top left rear corner is the origin. So this coordinate system, I need the origin to be this corner. When I flip the one for the front, the origin is going to be this corner because it will be on this face here. 
and the top left rear corner would be there. And then we're just rotating like this, so the right side is going to be this corner up here. When we get to the back side, it's going to be this corner here. When we get to the left side, it's going to be that corner there. And then from the top, when we go to the bottom, we're just going to roll it around like this and roll it in the X, and it's going to be that corner there. All in the top left corner. Top left corner. Okay, now I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to change probably three of these uh, using one method, and then I'm going to uh, go back and show you a better way to do it. But to start off with, let's look at move origin, uh, or change origin, sorry, change CS origin. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice is that there are two modes that you can change in. You can change in XYZ or HVD. A lot of people talk about XYZ as being absolute and HVD as being incremental, and in some ways that's that's accurate. Uh, but XYZ means relative to this plane, so you're moving the origin to a location relative to this coordinate system. Uh, so anytime you see an XYZ designation, it, it really means relative to the XY plane. Anytime you see HVD, which stands for horizontal, vertical, and depth, it means it's relative to whatever coordinate system is active. Uh, so uh, the difference is, let's move this origin one inch in the x-axis and xyz mode, and it moves one inch over. If I hit this button again, it doesn't go anywhere because it is already at x one inch measured from this origin. Okay. By the same token, if I tell it to go to zero, zero, zero in X, Y, Z, it goes to that origin, which is a good thing to keep in mind if you ever get lost in the coordinate system. Okay, let's do the same thing in HVD mode. If I do it in HVD mode, then this one inch, still labeled X, but, this, but in HVD it means it's relative to the active coordinate system. So it goes to the exact same place. But if I click the button again, it goes because it's always moving an inch from where it is in this case. If I go to zero, it doesn't go anywhere because it's already there. And to take it back where we know where it's at, I'm just going to do it in XYZ to zero and take it back to that origin. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to change a couple of these origins. I'm going to manipulate a couple of these origins in XYZ mode. Uh, so we're on the top, so it's already oriented the correct way. It's oriented to the top of the part. I just need to move the origin X minus 2, Y positive 2, and Z positive 2 to get to that corner. So X minus 2, Y2, Z2, and it should go to that corner right there. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the front. The first thing I want to do is get it positioned, get it oriented. Uh, and so the front is the XZ plane. So that tips it up to the front. Now I need to move it X minus 2, Y minus 2, Z positive 2. So I've got to change the Y to a minus 2. And it goes to the correct corner. I'll go to the right side. I'm going to stand that up in the YZ plane, which faces the right side. Okay, I need to move it X positive 2. Y minus 2, Z positive 2 to get it to that corner there. So this changes to a positive 2. The point that I'm making is that every face on here has an origin at a different corner. Um, so uh, except for the, the top and the left side both have that corner as the origin. But other than that, the origin is on a different corner for every face. Uh, so therefore, if you're moving it relative to a fixed location, fixed to the y, uh, fixed to the x y plane, they're all at different positions. They're all at different values in here. So that means I'm having to change for every. You know, I'm having to change numbers for every origin that I do. So let me undo back to here. All right. And I'm going to do this instead in HVD mode, okay? Because if you think about it, if you're looking straight down on this, every origin is getting moved to the left two, back two, and up two. So if I go minus two, two, and two here in HVD mode, we go back to the isometric view. 
move this around just a little bit and say do it, it goes to the correct corner. So all I've got to do is get it oriented first. I'm going to orient this one to the XY plane and move the origin. I'm going to ori uh, orient this one to the YZ plane and move the origin. The back, I'm going to orient to the XZ plane, but now up is coming toward this side. I need up going to the back. So this button here flips the depth axis around. Now it's pointing to the back and I can move the origin. The left side, I go to the YZ, that points it to the right, I flip the depth axis, it's pointing to the left, and move the origin. The bottom side is already oriented to the XY, all I need to do is flip the depth axis and move the origin. That gives me six faces, coordinate systems on all six faces. I've got the front, sorry, the top, the front, the right side, the back side, the left side, and then the bottom. Okay, so now what can I do with that? I'm going to open my geometry palette. I'm going to go to shapes. I'm going to go to text for engraving. Uh, I'm going to select a font that uh, that will work for me here. Let me come down. I think it's in the second set. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to use this comic just because I like it. And I'm going to just do a number one. Uh, I'm going to align that to X2, Y minus 2. Remember, since the corner is the origin, I want it over 2 and down 2. And I want that to be the center of my text. And I want that to be in this coordinate system. Okay? Now that's a bit small, so let me, that's a four inch face. Let's go ahead and make a three inch letter. There we go. All right? Now I'm going to switch to the front coordinate system and do a two. I'm going to switch to the right coordinate system and do a three. Oops. Don't hit enter. Enter will not activate do it. Enter adds another line of text. So if I do that, the center of two lines of text is at the center of that face. It doesn't give me what I what I wanted. Uh, so let me backspace to take that second line out. And there's our three. We're going to go to the back side and do a four. Go to the left side and do a five. and go to the bottom and do a six. All right. Now notice that geometry that is in an inactive coordinate system is purple. So that's just another visual cue as to what is associated with or what is assigned to the active coordinate system. All right, let's look at creating toolpath on this. I'm just, basically, I'm going to do the same thing on all six sizes, sides. So I'm going to create a tool. Uh, I think a quarter inch tool will probably fit in there. Uh, so I'm going to create a quarter inch end mill. Um, and I'm going to create a pocketing routine. I'm not going to worry about roughing and finishing. I'm just going to rough this. Uh, top at zero, bottom at We'll say we're going a quarter inch deep, and I'll do that in two steps just to create a little bit of tool path. I don't need an entry exit move for this. I certainly don't want to leave a quarter inch stock. Um, and uh, all of that's good. So uh, I'm going to select the shape that I want to cut, which is this, and this is not going to end up correct. I'm going to hit do it. My tool pass down in the middle of the block. The reason is, if I can look at my rotate tab, my machine CS is set to the XY plane. If I set that to the top plane, then these numbers are relative to the top plane. But when it's set to the XY plane, these numbers are relative to the XY plane. So we say redo, and it's correct. Now, just for clarity's sake, I can select that two without switching to that, you know, without actually activating that coordinate system. And as long as I set the machining CS, to the front side, it will do the toolpath correctly. Right. However, I prefer to actually activate the coordinate system just as my final verification that the, the geometry is, is what I think the geometry is. Uh, so we're going to go to the right side, do it. We're going to go to the back side. Now here I've got a pocket and an island, so I have to select both of those. And we will do it. I'll change my machining CS to the left side. Select the five. 
and switch it to the bottom side. Again, this is not, you know, changing the actual active CS is not necessary. For me, it's just, it changes that, that geometry to blue. It just helps me verify that I'm, machin I'm machining what I think I'm machining. Um, so I select that and we will say do that. Again, I've got a pocket and an island on both the four and the six. But that part's machined. So let's see what it looks like. I'll slow it down a little bit. Travel limit exceeded. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the document control, go to machine setup, and make sure that neither of these, uh, sorry, make sure that neither of these have an axis limit. And we will rewind, close this. Uh, I've got skip unselected ops turned on. And of course, I've got it on fixed parts, so the part stays still. The tool's going to rotate around that. Uh, I could go to the point of view lock right here and tell it to do machine orientation. And what it will do now is rotate so that. And then we also see the X and Y moving. I need to reduce the distance from the wall on my helix. But that is creating geometry on multiple faces or for different orientations and then applying toolpath to that. Now, you know, obviously this is not a highly machinable part, not in one operation at least. Um, but uh, just wanted to kind of show you how to create the geom how to create coordinate systems, put geometry on those coordinate systems and then machine that geometry. So boy, I'd like you to do pretty much what I did here. You can do a different size block. Uh, you can do letters or numbers or text or boxes and circles and ovals and squares, whatever you want to do. Just make all each of the six faces a little bit different.